Okay, hi, welcome back. Um, this is uh, White Raven Book Rook on Vancouver Island, and I'm making the, I think this is part six of the lap book 2023. Um, we were following the tutorial of Nick the Booksmith, and um, the last thing she did was she made a little box, a lined box, which, um, will go inside the lap book on the back cover here. So um, she had actually done some stuff off the camera and I wanted to just make sure that <clears throat> I shared with you what I did because I um, only just think it's <laughs> If you're following something and then all of a sudden somebody's got something and you don't know what the heck happened like how did when did that appear and why is that different I like to sort of make you follow along with all the steps so quite simply i've got the hard card back and then i've got those pieces that i added on and that's got the spine which i had to make a little bit deeper of the spine i think i had it a half it is now uh, three quarters just over three quarters because it has to accommodate for this book when the book goes in and the book um this cover has to go over okay so and i don't know what we're putting on here yet so i made it just a nice a little bit bigger of a spine than the box all right um now the box is going to um nick made a bunch of little boxes that went inside little specimen boxes she called them and um she's got oh, one of those i don't even know what the heck they are but they build everything out of plastic for you it, it's a, some kind of a printer 3d printer i think so she made these little boxes and i thought well how many of us have those um duh not many so I thought, well, a lot of us do have the um, chapter threes um, from Sizzix. And I'm going to probably be using these Fair Mountain here because um, I love them. And they're all about um, my theme, which is um, recording and outdoor botanical documentation and collection. So if you don't have this... You can make some little boxes and then follow next or figure out a way to make a little box or whatever you want to do that's going to simulate what I've got. And I decided what I did was going to do here is, like I said, I used this and what, the one I cut out was the little slide. Um, what is it? Slide projector. Um, slide. So um, I had some watercolor paper. I thought about, you know, stacking these up and that kind of thing. So it would be more like what Nick had, but I didn't, it just seemed like that wasn't the right thing. So I decided instead that I would make a bunch of these and I used watercolor paper, fairly heavy weight. If you hang on, I'll tell you. Sorry, I had to go hunting. And uh, this is the watercolor paper that I had. Um, and this is 140 pound. Uh, Strathmore watercolor, but use whatever you got. It's just I'm just trying to show you that it's it's a fairly heavy, heavy weight card paper, and so I cut these out of that, and uh, I had to run them through the Sizzix machine, and it was fair tough. But I already had painted these one another time, and they were painted on both sides, and I thought, well, those would make cute little little deweys in here. So what she did, I haven't been clear yet, what she did um, was she made these little specimen boxes and in the boxes they have a little acetane window like, you know, we would have on a slide and then in the back she had little things from nature like a, a leaf, um, a picture of a bug, a feather, that kind of thing. So anyway, I thought that I would cut these out and so I cut out... Um, I cut out 12 of them and I'm going to use them in here now again she just did the specimen boxes and I think she did two four six eight as well so they're about this size but so and she only did them on the one side 
but I thought since mine don't have the depth, I could put them on both sides. So these are what I'm going to use. If you can imagine what these are going to like look like once they're all um, laid flat and and then uh, glued in. So that's going to be sort of what they're going to look like. Um, kind of hard to. I think what I need to do is just get that step done. And so all I'm going to do is let you follow me through when I get to that point as to how I'm going to do each one individually. And maybe I'll do one or two. And then I will get them into the box. I'm not going to uh, video. Uh, what have I got here? Two, four, six, eight. So I got 16 of these that to make. All right. So I'm not quite sure what I'm going to use at this point, but I think I may be able to use the uh, Sizzix uh, dies for these bugs. I can't remember what they were called, but uh, or when they came out. But they're all a bunch of little um, cutouts for these little bugs. And I thought, um, I'm going to probably just cut them all out on with plain watercolor paper. And then I can come back and just color um, the bits that I, that I need so that they'll show up. So my hope is that they're going to be the right size to fit in these frames. Some might be a little bit big, but, um, and, and then not, there's not going to be enough here because I need 16. And I think there's 11 or 12 on here. So I probably am also going to do some seeds or see if I have another die that's a nature-based die like this, um, that I might be able to use. Um, so I have um, a number of the little dies that are from the funky, funky floral set that I might be able to go and just do a leaf or, um, you know, like, like, like that, a leaf or pine cone, um, something like that, and um, maybe use those. Since the weather outside is still frightful, I'm not be able to go out and really collect um, any leaves or seeds, um, I don't think. Anyway, we'll see as we go. But <laughs> before we get to that point, which is that whole thing that's going to go on this inside page, this card um, file thing that um, she's using, I'm finding it really flimsy. And I don't know what it's going to do to hold this box. And I am a little bit concerned about that. And also, nothing's looking pretty here. So, um, uh, Nick had covered hers with something, I don't know what. And so I went around trying to find what I had that might be large enough to cover the whole thing. And since this box is going to go on here, once it's closed, I'm covering up a lot of that page. So, um, make a long story even longer. I'm just, I found this paper... Um, it's a fairly fragile paper. You can actually see right through it. But I thought I would put that down. And I have it in a green. I have an, quite a bit of green. And I have a little bit of this brownish color. Which I really like. But I don't have as much. So it's very thin. And whether it'll tear. So I'm going to um, probably just go with the green. And get it down. All right. So what I want to do is I'm going to do this side for sure, and then probably the other sides of the uh, the back cover and the, the the right side flap. So I'm going to just take posh. Got my mod podge glue, and I'm just going to glue that all on there and place this on, and then I'm going to let it dry. Okay, so I um, have a little sidekick, and um, it never wants to stick. Uh, well, it sticks, but it comes off easy. Anyway, um, I've got some of watercolor paper that's left over from something else, and I've just cut it so it'll fit through my sidekick. And I'm just gonna run through a few bug, a few bugs, and um, make as many as I can. So as you can see, I've just uh, Put them on the page and I run it through the machine and uh, it'll pop out like that. Nice and easy. So I've just put them all on there. I've got a couple more still to go and some I might just do twice. I'm not sure of the littler ones probably. 
Okay, so I've got most of the bugs punched out now. And I'm measuring them up to that slide that I made. Those slides, I made 16 slides to go in the box. And a lot of them are, are bit, a bit too big. Um, and I don't know if that's going to bother me or not. Um, I kind of don't mind it. You know, when I got them in there. I kind of don't mind it. So I'm going to just paint them off anyway and then see. And then I've got these back um, drops too. Whether I'm going to leave the back drops or whether I'm going to end up painting them another color. I don't know. Um, some of these bugs, I don't know what they are, but I think that one is a cockroach. And we don't have those around here, so um, I can't identify them. But I'm going to just paint the bodies all with these this beautiful color set that I have. Um, you might want to get this. There's the package. Just, it wasn't very expensive, and um, I've had it for a while and it's still going, still ticking, so um, check it out on Amazon. I don't know how to do the links to it, the product, but uh, if you really need to know and you don't, you can't find it, let me know and I'll look for you. See if I can go back on my orders and uh, find it. So anyway, lots of really pretty colors here. Look, copper and a, um, a pinkish, old gold, new gold, white gold, silver. So I'm going to paint the boogs and let them dry, take a break, and then I'll come back and assemble a, um, one of the, one of the slides. Some of them got weird markings on because I ran them through twice, but that's okay. I don't care. I don't mind. I don't, my books aren't perfect. I don't want them to be perfect. And um, that works just great for me. So, but oh yeah, I wanted to tell you that all these little windows that popped out, I saved them all. And from there, I saved them all. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with them, but I put them in my pile of um, maybe later stuff. Okay, so I'm going to get to it and I'll show you the results once they're dry and ready to put in to the first slide. So I thought, well, you know, I'll show you what I'm doing and how it looks for the first one or two. And I'm not, um, this is more of just an artistic display. It's not a realism. It's not a uh, anything, obviously. I mean, there may be a bug like this, but I'm not trying to make bug look like something that's out there. This is just um, for cool display purposes. And um, I think I might go back in and put all their all this, all their legs in black and their antennas. Alright, so that's how I'm doing it. Okay, so um, I made a few bugs. Painted them up. And um, I painted the insides of the slide. I thought that they would stand out better against a black background. So I've also cut out some, I have protective cover sheets and um, I cut them into two inch squares, which I'm going to put on to the inside front with a little glue. First of all, I'm going to put the little bugs, glue bugs down. And then I will put the acetate on and then close those in like so. Okay, so I am I'm going to use my Barely Art Precision Craft Glue because it's almost almost as good as our glitter glue. It sticks really good, sticks really quickly. So first thing I have to think about is I'm going to put these in this way into the box. So they need to go um, with this to the bottom. 
and then I need to just place the little bugs in place them in right where I want them glue them down so I'm just gonna keep the lid closed and put this where I want it and then take the other one glue the back of it and put it where I want it and uh, this glue dries clear so it's going to be good, good once it's dry And then I'll just put the acetate piece on. On both sides, it has to be, um, first of all, it'll have to be glued onto here, onto this piece. the acetate now I will just glue that down I know some people use that um, all that crazy glue that's really sticky but I find I get on my fingers and then I've got myself stuck to myself so that's just not gonna work for me so I'm just gonna put that down onto there so because you do get a little overrun of that glue just gonna press that in good and all around and there's one to go and that's what's gonna look like so 15 more to go and then I will um, put them into the box and uh, like that so I think that's going to achieve the effect and then I'm going to put like I said eight on each side so it's going to uh, take some time I'll show you when it's all done with the archival because I also made some of these little stickers uh, again it's out of the Tim Holtz chapter 3 um, I don't have the package oh yes no I don't the package not here you know the old one the other one I used before um, I'll show you later so anyway I thought um, Nick had a bunch of little tiny um, stickers and stuff all over hers but I noticed that she has a little more room and I thought I would just put these little stickers on some of them. Oops, sorry. Look at that. So I'm going to add that to them. Some of them I don't really want to cover up too much of that. I like the writing on there, but I'm going, I've got a few of these. I don't have 16, but I don't, um, I'm just going to go through and, and start gluing these on to some of them and then, um, I will show you when they're done and ready to go into the box finally okay I'm ready I have uh, come up with an arrangement that I thought is going to be pretty good 
So I want to get it so you can see the whole box. Oops, I have to go higher. And there you go. So, um, yeah, I'm ready. This is what I've got. This is what I've come up with. This is what I'm going with. Okay, so I'll paste them in and I'll be back. I had thought about putting black ribbon under behind, uh, which was kind of nice, but it's kind of a, a lot of ribbon that is hidden. And it's that velvet ribbon I like the best. Um, so anyway, this is what I decided to do. I decided I'd go with these labels with a little bit of the archival black ink on them. And um, some of them have the wording. And I might just switch a few around more as I go, you know. Anyway, I'm going to get them glued and then finish off this video. And uh, the last one, finally. And all I've done is tie Taking the collage medium, I love that glue, it works for everything. And I've just put a big uh, blob in the middle of the slide on the back. And I'm just positioning that in there, like that. And um, I didn't glue down the entire back because I wanted them to have a little bit of um, a texture or um, depth to them. So this is um, what I ended up with. I put them in like so. And uh, I'm, ha I'm happy with it. I'm really, really happy with it. So I um, hope you guys are um, liking it too and coming up with your own ideas on what you can do to make your lap book your lap book. Okay, so take care of yourselves and I'm going to get this finished up. And once this is dry... It's going to be very simple. I'm just going to I'm just going to glue it in to the back cover right there. And the no big deal. There's nothing fancy about that. So, I'm just going to um, take the back of the book of the box and cover it with uh, glue and put it right onto there. So, you'll see that in the next video cuz I have to wait for these to dry. So, okay. Well, thanks for joining me and we'll see you in the next Part. I think it'll be part six. All right, take care. Hope you guys are enjoying making your own. And um, yeah, we'll see you soon. Okay, bye bye. Take care.